okay hello everyone so next next topic is end fire array that is also called as hansen woodyard array okay hansen and woodyard has proposed this array so in this uh, linear uniform arrays already we have discussed about broadside array so the next topic is so the next continuation of that one is end fire array now we are going to discuss about this what is an end fire array here we are going to discuss okay so that is the continuation topic end fire array okay so what is an end fire array means for end fire array maxima is at 0 and 180 degrees so this is the major difference between the previous topic that is broadside array and end fire array so in broadside array the radiation pattern is along 90 and 270 but here the radiation maxima is at 0 and 180 degrees you have to remember that point in end fire array okay so this why we need this end fire array means instead of broadside array this array is used to improve directivity of array so why we use this end fire array means majorly we used this end fire array hansen and woodyard has proposed this array this type of array to increase the what directivity to increase the directivity that is the major point here you have to remember that that is the important point so here i have drawn the so sample diagram i have taken two point sources which are separated by a distance of d and which is having the divided into two points here so i have taken one point and otherwise you can take here one distant point distant point here that is p okay distant point p so this is the difference d cos phi phase difference here which is separated by a distance total distance is d okay so here what is the major application of this end fire array why the hansen and woodyard which are proposed this array means to increase the directivity you can call this one as end fire array or hansen woodyard array remember that point okay so next going to that so what is the increased directivity how we are going to increase the directivity by using this end fire array concept so okay so here i have taken four point sources how many four point sources which are radiating point sources one two three four point sources isotropic point source means so these are radiating whatever i am saying point source point source point source means so what is a point source which can be radiated radiated means which can give the electric and magnetic fields which can radiate into the space so that can called as a point source which is having some radiation pattern okay so the, here i have taken point sources one two three four which are separated by a distance of lambda by four lambda by four distance okay so here what is the initial phase difference we have the formula alpha is equal to plus or minus beta d we know that beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda and d means here the separation that is lambda by 4 so what we got here plus or minus 90 degrees so basic in basic these point sources which are which is which are having the phase shift of initial phase shift of plus or minus 90 degrees then you will have the radiation pattern like like this okay so already I have said for end fire array the maxima the major lobe will be on 0 and 180 degrees that is nothing but along the axis of array which is not perpendicular to the axis of array okay which is along the axis of array in broadside array so the elements are placed along the this along this axis and radiation pattern is perpendicular to the, this axis that is 90 and 270 but in case of end fire array so the radiation pattern is along this axis along the array of axis so for example if i place it, these point sources like this okay so this is the axis of array and the radiation pattern the maxima is also the along the axis of array so it, these will have the minor lobes when the phase shift is plus or minus 90 degrees when this phase shift initial so now how the hansen and woodyard proposed an concept to increase the directivity of this array to how we are going to increase the directivity of this array means there is a small change which is adding so the phase shift alpha is equal to plus or minus beta d along with this beta d he in added that pi by n he added this term pi by n for increasing the directivity for in by adding the phase shift by adding some phase angle we can increase the directivity what is that pi by n here n means number of point sources n means number of point sources initially we have the phase shift beta d along that we added plus pi by n where n is 
number of point sources again if you simplify that one beta means 2 pi by lambda d means lambda by 4 plus pi by 4 then if you simplify that one you will get pi by 2 plus pi by 4 means 90 plus 45 you got 135 degrees means so if you add every point source which is adding each 135 degrees angle initially we have 90 degrees the phase shift is e at each stage which is having 135 degrees then you will get the radiation pattern like this this is the radiation pattern means if you observe with the uh, previous one so the radiation that the directivity has increased along this axis and the previous lobe this lobe has nullified to like this and one okay so if you observe previously this slope this slope has nullified and the directivity has increased to far so what is the advantage of this one means for sending the data for longer distances we need the high directivity okay so for that purpose the end fair area and hanson woodyard area are so those by giving some phase phase shifts we increased the directivity along the air axis of array and previous this lobe has nullified to this okay and we you will have some minor lobes also okay so this is about four point so and if you come to same concept for eight point sources which are separated by lambda by two distance so for initial phase alpha you will get plus or minus 180 degrees so you will have the radiation pattern like this you will have may, more minor lobes and for if you increase the directivity if you want to increase the directivity by applying the hanson woodyard concept by adding the fish pi by n here n means number of point sources here number of point sources are 8 previously we have 4 here we have 8 means that pi by 8 means 22.5 here we have the angle 202.5 degrees so for it every stage we are going to add 202.5 degrees phase shift then you can increase the directivity much more again we increase the di directivity and this slope back lobe is nullified again this lobe is nullified you will get the more minor lobes also then here we increased the directivity for to get the longer distance communication we use this concept so this is about end fire array or hanson woodyard array okay okay further if you observe so next so in next topic further broadside array and uniform linear arrays so we have the next topic comparison of broadside array and end fair array so still now we discussed about the broadside array and end fair array so by taking those what are the discussion we have done so by taking those points we are going to compare here so what is that broadside array and end fair array means here i have taken some points only so in material you have more points just i have taken here some key points to explain you okay just uh, listen to this okay in broadside array what is the radiation pattern it is perpendicular to the axis of array so when coming to end fire array the radiation pattern is along the axis of array so if you observe those two diagrams you can understand okay so in broad side array, we, the perpendicular to the axis of array in end fire array which is along the axis of array okay so another major point is in broad side array elements carry currents which are equal in magnitude and phase okay so what are the elements which can carry the currents which are in magnitude and phase are equal so when coming to end fire array so magnitude is equal but the phase phase is getting varied like the four point source eight point source so we increase at the 90 to 135 and uh, 180 to 202 degrees like that the phase is going to vary here you have some formulas regarding broadside array and end fire array those are directivity for directivity of maximum directivity gain directivity is 2 into l by lambda where l is the length of the array when coming to end fair array 4 into l by lambda and half power beam width 57.3 into 3 by l by lambda degrees when coming to end fair array square root of 2m into l by lambda okay so you have some problems on these formulas you have uh, again we have personal beam width formula again so you have some formulas you can read by the uh, in, in your material okay just have given some logic main points here okay so we will see some problems um, example problems on these formulas first problem is an end fire array consisting of several half wavelengths along isotropic radiation have directive gain at 30 degree 30 uh, find the length of array for broadside array and end fire array and first null beam width for both cases what we have to find we have to find the length of the array we have to find the length of the array and 
first null beam width of the broadside array and end fair array first what we have given we have to write we have given the gain okay that is d is equal to 30 we have the formula for gain that is 2 into l by lambda for broadside array that is that we can equate that one okay if we equate 2 into l by lambda you have to find the l d into lambda by 2 so here d means 30 by 2 lambda you got the 15 lambda okay so what is the length of the array means 15 lambda for what broadside array next for end fire array 4 into l by lambda that is l is equal to d by 4 into lambda d is 30 here for end fire array you got 7.5 lambda for first null beam width you have the formula for broadside array that is 114.6 by l by lambda you have to remember all these formulas for broadside array first null beam width formula is this one here you know the l l means length of the array for broadside array what we got l that is 15 lambda by lambda if you simplify that one you got this one 7.64 degrees okay for end fire array this is the formula 114.6 into square root of 2m by l lambda where m is equal to 1 here m what is m means so here first nulls means you have to take the m is equal to 1 so here we have the nulls first null second null we are going to calculate here first nulls that way that's why we have taken m is equal to 1 so m is equal to 1 means if you simplify that one you, you will get the answer so for m is equal to 1 means you can write here 114.6 into square root of 2 by for end fire array what is the l 7.5 lambda by lambda 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 cancel square root of 2 by 7.5 you can simplify this one you will get the answer okay so like that you can solve the problems you will have some more problems you can practice so you have to remember only for formulas if you remember the formulas you are able to do the calculations of problems okay another type of formula another um, problem we are going to see that is calculate half power beam width solid angle if linear array having 10 isotropic point sources with lambda by 2 spacing and phase difference of 90 degrees okay so what we have to calculate half power beam width and solid angle we have to calculate those two things okay what he has given the spacing he has given that is d is equal to lambda and phase difference that is 90 degrees has given if you know the uh, difference spacing d is equal to lambda by 2 you can find out the length of the array that is l that is equal to n minus 1 into d because we know the number of isotropic point sources what is the 10 10 isotropic has given that's why n is equal to 10 10 minus 1 into lambda by 2 then it is 9 lambda by 2 9 lambda by 2 so if you further calculate half power beam with formula for so what is the case here here it is end fire array case how you know that this is end fire array case means here in, in the problem he said i will show here in the problem he said phase difference is 90 degrees so when coming to broadside array 